Hey guys, you're watching Dansky, the place to be to develop your creative skills and in this tutorial we're going to jump back into Adobe Dimension and I'm going to show you how you can add custom light sources to a scene. Okie dokie, so this is going to be a fun one. And before we get started, if you like the audio from this tutorial, then I'm using Logitech's Yeti X microphone. I just want to say a huge thank you to them. A little while ago, they sent me a box of goodies, a microphone, some headphones, a webcam, a whole bunch of stuff. So thank you Logitech, I really appreciate it. And without further ado, we're now going to jump into the tutorial. And I'm going to show you a cheeky way that you can add lighting to a scene. Now, of course, we can do lights in Dimension up here. We have our lights panel. We can do all these different lights, directional, three point, we can add environment lights, but we can't actually create a light source yet. Well, kind of, there is a way that we can do this and we can do this using the glowing material. And I'm gonna show you how to add lighting to this lovely little dinner date scene that I've created here. So we have here some chairs, a table, some wine, a lamp. And apart from the fact we're actually missing people and food or any sense of atmosphere, we don't have any lighting and we're just going to have to do something about that. So first of all, I'm going to jump up here and go on to real time rendering so you can see this in action and you will need this enabled to see these effects. Hopefully my computer isn't going to melt. Come on, laptop, you can do it. OK, so this is what the scene looks like without any lighting. And what we're going to do is we're going to add a bulb or a fake bulb inside the lampshade and we're going to have some light streaming in through the doorway as well. So if I just open the folder here, you can see this scene is incredibly complicated and we're going to ignore all that, leave that locked away in its own folder. And here I have the lamp. If I just turn this off and on, there we go. They're pretty self-explanatory. So let's add some lights. Now what I'm going to do is just switch off real-time rendering so my computer doesn't melt. And I think first of all, I'm going to work on the lamp. So if I just jump over here to new object and I'm going to create a sphere, we'll drag this into the scene of course it's way too big I've never seen a bulb that big so I'm gonna press S on the keyboard for the scale tool click and hold shift to scale this down I'm gonna try and make this bulb size and before I go ahead I've created a custom camera so if I accidentally do this I can just jump back boom there we go straight back to the kind of final render view that I'm gonna have so E on the keyboard we'll move this up E is the shortcut for the move tool and I'm going to press one on the keyboard, which is the shortcut to rotate the camera around. So all of these tools in combination just help me to kind of position this in the middle. And you can, of course, use the align tools over on the right hand side. But I'm feeling a bit lazy and I'm just going to do it the manual way. So just spinning that camera around, <laughs> get that bulb. There we go. You can see this is definitely a hack. Oops. And we've gone into the table. So what I probably should do really is go into the scene folder, find the table. Is that not the table? No, nope, that's not the table. There must be another table somewhere. Where is the table? Okay, we'll zoom out. If you do have trouble selecting an object, no, the table is gone. I was looking at the floor. My bad. Okay, we'll zoom back in. <laughs> okay, so the floor is actually in the way as well. Do you know what? I'm just, uh, I'm just gonna hide everything. So if I just go onto the scene folder, we'll click on the eyeball, hide that. There we go. So now I can focus just on the lamp and suddenly everything is running a lot smoother. So let's just move that camera. We'll get right up inside there. There we go. You can see we have our giant bulb. I'm probably going to just shrink this a tiny bit. It doesn't really matter because nobody's going to see this. Just make sure it's not sticking out the top. Okay, fantastic. So there we go. If I just go back to my bookmark, <laughs> there we go. We have a floating lamp with a bulb and nothing else. So I'm going to call this bulb because I will get confused. And then what I'm going to do is go over to materials. And as I mentioned, we're going to add the glowing material onto the bulb. And it will turn on real time rendering so you can see this in action. And you can see it emits a glow mostly downwards because we have the lampshade. So it's going to force a lot of that light to point downwards and I can go into the materials and we could change the color of our bulb so we could go for red and you can see it starts to emit a red light now of course it looks very kind of noisy grainy particle here when you actually render this 
in the end it won't look like this it will look lovely hopefully and what I can actually do is go down to glow here now you can see glow is set to 500% I can drag this all the way up and actually if I punch in a custom value so if I punch in let's say 2000 this becomes my new maximum so don't be fooled you can actually go above 100% you can go to any percent you like I mean I've gone to 10,000 before and that becomes your new maximum so you can see now I can slide anywhere between 0 and 2000 uh, that's probably going to be uh, pretty overpowering for a bulb to go in a lamp so I'll probably bring that back to 500 but then if I go back up here to bulb we'll switch back on the scene and you'll see how it affects and interacts objects around it like the table it's going to reflect off the wine glasses that kind of thing and something else I can actually do is if I go into the lamp this particular object has lots of different components and I've also labeled here the fabric of the lampshade so I can turn this off and on and of course a lot of lampshades are somewhat translucent you can see the light coming through them so I can go into this material I could assign it a different material from the selection on the left I can go and change all the different properties but I can also go down here to translucence and if I bring the translucence from 0 up to about 40 watch this you'll see that light start to come through and I could like I say go and change the color of the lampshade as well and you can tinker around with this we've got uh, some different settings down here that you can play with and you kind of see in real time you get that preview of how it's going to look in fact I think I'll leave the light on that lampshade red for now but then I could go back and make the glow a bit brighter so you get the idea lots of flexibility okay so we've added the light for our lamp and now I'm going to add the light coming in through the toy this is this is a really cool hack so I'm just going to go over here to my materials grab a cube it's a giant cube uh, I love this I'm spinning the camera around and I'm gonna use E for the move tool and I'm just gonna stick this giant cube outside the doorway I absolutely love this this is this is such a such a bodge job <laughs> okay so we'll leave that there and then what I'm gonna do is grab materials and drop that glowing material on it once again and I'm gonna go for something like Ooh, we'll go for 1500 on the glow and I'm gonna make it slightly yellowy we don't really want like a bright white light we'll go for something like this and I'm gonna jump back to my camera and let's turn on real-time rendering and see how that looks oh and you can see that light there streaming in through the doorway bouncing off the doors and just Ah, oh, looks fantastic. And if you tinker around for long enough, you end up with something that looks like this. So there we go. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you do have any questions or comments, hey, you know what to do. Drop those down below. But as always, like this video if you enjoyed it. Take care and I'll see you next time.